Hey, Simply Church, it's David. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a great Sunday, growing and loving Jesus together. Uh, we today would have finished chapter 12 of the book of Daniel, which means it's the final chapter in our Daniel series about the battle of two kingdoms. Hope that you've been encouraged by it, challenged by it. Um, been asking questions about what does that look like for us as, as a church and growing together and reaching out to those around us. Uh, if anything that we can remember from it would be God's sovereignty, God's control, God's power, God's at work, God's greatness, God's goodness. Hopefully Daniel as a character has really again encouraged and challenged you just seeing his faithfulness from a, a teenage right the way through into old age how he doesn't change and waver in his faith, how he remains steadfast and sure that he trusts God in life and in death, that he's able to speak into kings and kingdoms and all of these sorts of things and, and really is influential amongst about the three greatest nations of the time, whether that's the Babylonians, the Persians, or the even the, even the Greek kingdoms were, were influenced by Daniel. And we know that all the way through, right the way through to Jesus' time, even the Magi that came out of Babylonia, would have been influenced by the stories and the and the faith of, of Daniel that made them even seek out the Messiah. Uh, it's just been an incredible book to go through, especially during our time when there's so much uncertainty in our world, in our country, whether that's energy prices, whether that's wars, whether that's pandemics, that just to be reminded that God is good, that he is in control, that he's working all things according to his plan and that we get the privilege to trust him, to walk with him, to discover his heart and his will and, and just be obedient to it. Uh, the book of Daniel chapter 12, I guess, really brings us right the way through into uh, the end times of which we walk in. We walk the Bible clear. Matthew tells us that even since Jesus's time, it was the end times. And we, we walk in those times now that we walk towards the day that Jesus will return, which could be any day soon. Yeah, it reminds us of, of great tribulations that will face our earth, but... but uh, that we will know that God that will come soon, Jesus will come soon after, that he will preserve us and sustain us. Uh, and that's encouraged us even in the book of Revelation, which we'll be going on to next after a couple of weeks break. Um, so yeah, just really encourage you to go back over, Daniel, pray into parts of it, ask God to reveal things to you about how you see things and how you walk. Uh, as I said, chapter 12, as we looked at today, we see that there's this contrast between those who are in the book of life or in the book, uh, Revelation calls it the book of life, and those that aren't, those that go to eternal life and those that go to eternal contempt. And that's a real sobering picture as we come towards the end of Daniel, that our life is not about how successful we are in the world standards or whatever our great achievements are. Even Daniel, even though... Uh, you know, God used him and uh, he was even raised to very significant parts of the uh, the kingdoms that he was involved in. Really, the whole purpose was to bring Jesus, to bring God into that situation. It wasn't to just to, for him to, to gain wealth or, or great influence or stature, but actually that God would be seen through those things. And so I really encourage us in these days is to be asking ourselves, how is our life impacting those around us so how am i impacting my brothers and sisters causing them to love jesus more we, we were sharing this together in our home church today just being challenged by you know not not beating ourselves up not not saying oh we're not good enough but actually are, do, does our life really reflect christ are we being more changed into his image are we seeking out opportunities to encourage one another in the faith not just making it about a program or a, an event or a sunday gathering but actually daily encouraging one another to to love Jesus more and, and the byproduct of that will be men and women and children that love Jesus we're not just talking about adults here you know we should be thinking about the kids in our church what how are we causing them to love Jesus are we just making it about other things or are we getting them to see that all they need is Jesus yes they've got to, it's important that they work hard and study and all those kinds of things but it is still all about Jesus for them they are potentially will take on a baton if Jesus doesn't return that we will hand to them and we want to hand them a good bat and enables them to run the race with Jesus well. So are we encouraging one another right through from the youngest to the oldest to make Jesus our greatest love, aim, goal, passion? Are we causing ourselves to become less attached to the world and more attached to him? And that, like I said, that sobering part about 
you know, yes, we've got eternal life, but what about those that haven't? You know, our life makes different. God chooses to bring the gospel through us. And are we sharing Jesus at every opportunity? Are we believing that people can be saved? They don't need us just to kind of hoodwink them into the to the Christian faith. They just need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And are, do we believe that we are the carriers of that Holy Spirit, that we can bring Jesus to people on a day-by-day basis? Can, we can see people saved. And I've been thinking about this over this last week and just been stirred afresh again that, um, you know, we, we exist as Christians to give ourselves away. This is not about what we get. It's about what can we give? How can we serve? How can we love? Love our love each other, love our world, love our God. Do we love each other enough to be inconvenienced by one another? Do we love people around us that don't know Jesus and their only future is hell? Do we love them enough to be inconvenienced by them? Do we love them enough to be bold in sharing our faith? To Do we love them enough not to um, just get caught up in all our own worries and will people like us or not like us? Or will they accept us or not accept us? Will, we be offend- will they be offended or not offended? but love them enough to speak truth, to speak Jesus, to see God's power and presence. I really feel a a quickening at the moment, a a stirring amongst this church for us to be seeking God, to ask him what this looks like. This is what we've been talking about at our home church. Okay, well, this is what we believe, so how can we do this? Let's spend time seeking, praying, fasting if necessary to see, okay, what does my life need to, what is God asking of my life? What is that? How does it reflect him? Am I walking in everything that he wants us to as a as a body and reaching out to those around us? So I really encourage you to be in doing the same. All that's going on in Daniel will springboard us into our, our church weekend, which I really would say, please come to the church weekend or day. It's not even a weekend, it's a day. It's the 15th of May. It's a Sunday. Please put in your diary. Come to it. Come to the whole thing. Don't just leave early. You know, really book it out and and be intentional to be there. I really would encourage that. We're going to grow together. We're going to share together. Living ready in these times. How does it look to disciple, to reach out, to share the gospel? All of these things from our kids right the way through to adults. And bring your kids along. Get them plugged in, involved. And we break into the small groups. And we do all kinds of stuff. So please, please put that in your diary. 15th of May. It would be amazing if every one of us who says that we're part of Simply Church can be there. And that we really believe that God is going to move powerfully in that day. And and use that to help shape us as a church moving forward that we'll hear what god is saying in, during that day and and implement it and uh, and shape us as a church moving forward so, so that that will springboard us into that 15th of may which then will springboard us into our revelation series as we look at what the revelation has to say about us and as a church and us loving jesus so that's pretty much what i want to say um have a great rest of your day keep praying keep trusting keep believing that god is at work during these times And we are and we will see a great outpouring of his spirit with lives changed, people saved, people set free, people healed. And it's all because God chooses to work through us, you, me, his church. Have an amazing week. See you soon. Bye.